Hi, I'm Edward Andrews and I'm part of the team who conducts worship at St Michael's Parish Church, Dallas, Rafford Parish Church and St Leonard's Parish Church, Forres, Maury, Scotland. I welcome you all wherever you are and whenever you're viewing this video. COVID still impacts on society. Perhaps the success of the vaccine programme will bring the worst effects of the pandemic to a close, or perhaps not. Anyone who claims that they know the answers with certainty are going to mislead the people whom they're trying to influence. What we do know is that many people are left with the long-term effects of COVID, long COVID, which can be a debilitating illness, which can, as the name implies, last a long time. Institutions can also suffer from a form of long COVID. In the church of all kinds, we've simply been unable to go about our usual business for over a year. Now, when we begin to get back to what we have seen as our traditional way of doing things, we discover that things have moved on. We find ourselves having to re-examine how we did things. Of course, we can try and resurrect our past experiences. We can look back with nostalgia, but the past is a foreign country. Those of us who are involved in the Church of Scotland know that the most recent General Assembly has been looking at change. There's going to be a radical change how the Kirk serves the people of Scotland. As part of that, we as the people of God must think of what God is calling us to do in our communities. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor and release to the captives. Let us worship God. Let us sing hymn 122. Let all the world in every corner sing. The earth belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together, justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silence, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let us pray. Lord of the morning and of all our days and nights, we gather to praise you this new day. We thank you for all your gifts and praise you for all your care. For all you are, maker of all we see and know, giver of all good gifts and lover of us all. Your friend in all our lives, reaching out your hands to the stranger to embrace with strength and hope your guide for all our days, giving us wisdom, showing us the way to be, 
Lord of the morning, and of all our days and nights, we gather to praise you this new day. In Jesus' name. Praise be to you, our God, maker of heaven and earth, the very breath of life within us. Praise be to you, our God, Redeemer of the world, the very hope within us. Praise be to you, our God, giver of life, flame of inspiration, lighting our way, guiding our lives. Praise be to you, our one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Merciful God, we confess we find it difficult to live Christian lives. Oh, we're full of good intentions, but we're easily swayed from doing and saying what we know we should be doing. We're distracted by busyness and self-interest and handicapped by lack of confidence and insensitivity to others. We feel wretched before you, loving parent. Our sin makes us feel worthless. Help us to turn our minds away from ourselves and our inadequacies and to focus on you and your forgiving and accepting love. For only you have the power to make us holy and you, Almighty God, will do it. Thanks be to God Almighty. Your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do it also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen for the word of God. First of all, is it contained in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to verse 5. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. The gradual is Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In the city of our God is his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion, the very centre of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known to be her sure refuge. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk around her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds that you may tell those who come after. This is God, our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Let us pray. We wait on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your praise reaches to the ends of the earth, so gather in the nations to the beauty of your house, 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 13. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's the wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and healed them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except the staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed with oil many people who were ill and healed them. Thanks be to God for his glorious gospel. Today there is a real tension between those who believe that there is a faith which has been revealed once and forever and those who see the faith as being much more fluid. Yes, of course you have the basic doctrines of the historic faith, but how we understand them reflects our time. As Christians, we're called to respond in faith to the situation in which we find ourselves. I would argue that Christianity must be rooted in the incarnation where we're living in the faith in terms of the word made flesh. We confess a God who became incarnate at a particular place and time. The Bible is made up of books written to particular people at particular times. The content is concrete and not abstract and theoretical. Christians believe God to be present and active in each local context, in the faith of neighbour and stranger, and in the life we seek to build together. That's why I would argue that for Christians, theology is necessarily contextual. Theology isn't just a matter of academic analysis, rather it emerges from a life of prayer and practice in a community that meets with God in word and sacrament, that listens to the wisdom of tradition, and that seeks to discern and respond to God's presence and his actions in the world. The irony is that I'm advocating that this is the essential work of the people of Christ who, during the COVID period, were isolated and not able to leave their homes. So this is the starting point. The recovery from the effects of COVID are going to last for a long time. We as individuals and as a people of God must respond to the situation into which God has called us. We began our readings in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. So who was Ezekiel? Well, Ezekiel was a prophet from the time of the exile, roughly a contemporary of Jeremiah. Ezekiel is often projected, seen as a prophet of the end times, and so he was. But it wasn't the end times as in the second coming and the end of the world that he was writing about. It was the end of the kingdom of Judah, which happened from 597 and 
it was quite a long lingering death. There were several deportations and political and military unrest before most of the citizens of Jerusalem were deported to Babylon. In the end, Ezekiel and his wife are supposed to have gone to Babylon and Ezekiel's tomb in Iran is a feature, a place of pilgrimage for the three Aramaic religions. Ezekiel was called as a prophet. His ministry wasn't to a decent bunch of people. He was sent to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against God. His message was quite simply, say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. It's important for us to remember that the book of Ezekiel wasn't written by Ezekiel, but was written about Ezekiel. Now the book has been mined by those who want to use the rich imagery as if Ezekiel was looking forward over two and a half millennia to today and was predicting what's going to happen soon, using events of today and passages of Ezekiel as a harbinger of the end of time. Now that's a misuse of the book. The message of Ezekiel was to the people of his time who were failing in their task of being the people of God. His visions often were play-acting to type and get his listeners to realise the possibility of the actions of God over against the failure of the people and their leaders to be the people of God. The politics don't change that much. That's why we can read any history and see the same characters, the same schemes and ultimately the same failures at any time in history. Then the Middle East was in a mess. The regional powers were imposing their will. Judah was a very minor player and a leadership who were not faithful to the special understanding that was the foundation of the nation. They didn't understand that they had a special relationship with God, a special relationship which imposed on the nation actions, beliefs and limits. Ezekiel was called to remind the community of that fact. It was immaterial whether they listened or not. The fact was that there had been a prophet among them. 600 years later, a man from Nazareth comes back home. He wasn't well received. The reaction was the Palestinian equivalent of I can't is feather. It was against this background that of all the communities where Jesus is reported to have visited, that there was a lack of results. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. Now recently I was holding a very interesting discussion with one of my brothers in Christ. It was basically about what we should be expecting as followers of Christ. I found myself reflecting on the lectionary passages for today and replied, all these passages show that we're not called to be successful but faithful. Neither they will know there was a prophet nor Christ, if they don't listen, shake the very dust off their feet, were expecting success. We're working for God. God is Lord. Just perhaps what, where we've gone wrong has been to buy into our society and be big on individual success rather than the building of the kingdom. It was into this situation of ambiguity that the disciples were sent out. Never have people been sent out less physically prepared. The whole essence of their approach was weakness and lack of preparation. Listen to the instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. They were thrown out totally dependent on the generosity of others they were preaching the most basic demand of the faith that people should repent that they should see to change their lifestyle 
that they had to move on from having a little to not having anything. Ultimately, they had to be prepared that their ministry would be a failure, that nothing would happen and that they would have to walk away. So today, with the church, the people of God, emerging after the lockdown, what do we as the people of God do and say in the community where we're called to witness and serve? Because each of us must answer and serve or butt out, admit that the faith that really means little to us and take up other hobbies. But I believe that God has called us in service. And we'll now sing hymn 362, Heaven Shall Not Wait. Let us pray. Loving Lord, as we've broken your word together, seeking to learn what your demands are on us and how your kingdom may become real to your people, we ask you to motivate us as we join in prayer. Help us to understand that our prayers are not a shopping list of things which we want you to do, but we're reflecting on those issues which you wish us to be aware of. At this time of our environmental crisis we bring before you the world which you have created and which we have especially in the last couple of centuries managed to mess up through our exploitation of resources and carelessness and how we dispose of waste give us an understanding of the real cost of misuse of the environment motivate us to be prepared to act in whatever way is possible to address the decision makers so that they may take social and environmental costs of economic activities into account when they're making policy. Eternal God in your world, there's enough for everyone's need, but not enough for some people's greed. Give to your people the understanding that we may react with the community in which we live to give leadership so there may be society where there is justice and support for the disadvantaged 
in the community. Help us to be open to the needs of other people and lead us into seeing the situation of people through the eyes of faith that we may truly serve people in your love. Eternal God, at a time when the Church, especially in Scotland, is under challenge as probably never before in our history, we contemplate on the idea that the Church is meant to be a laboratory of peace, a parable of the Kingdom, a sign of contradiction among the nations, a place of welcome against the sectarianism and the xenophobia of the surrounding society, a community of praise. Our God, you call us to be church, enable us to create across cultural age and class boundaries a laboratory of peace, testing out your vision of community and love as we struggle to live with our differences. O oh God, you call us to be church, enable us to be a parable of the kingdom allowing the upside-down values of your commonwealth to nudge us away from the acquisition and self-regarding attitudes of our day. O God, you call us to be church, enable us to be a sign of contradiction among the nations, pointing to hope in the midst of disillusion, offering non-violent resistance when evil threatens, accepting loss of prestige or wealth in the cause of justice. O oh God, you call us to be church, enable us to be a place of welcome and warmth where what is ignored elsewhere may be heard and honoured, where sorrows may be shared and our stories told, where hard questions may be asked and new ideas greeted with joy. Our God, you call us to be church, enable us to be a community of praise cracking open the dry husks of cynicism and despair, being clowns and jesters for Christ, celebrating the mystery of faith in stillness and song. We remember with joy those who have travelled with us for some distance along the pilgrim road and who now have found the rest in you. Grant that we may remember them with realism and love and may live our lives remembering how they showed to us the love of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us for the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We we'll now sing hymn 641, Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
are the body of Christ. Go and be hands, reaching out to the needy, holding the friendless and willingly receiving God's love. Go and be feet, walking the extra mile, striving for others and humbly letting Jesus wash you. Go and be tongues, chatting the good news, welcoming all and allowing God's Spirit to speak to you. You're the body of Christ. Praise God and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining in this act of worship. I will, God willing, be conducting the online service next Sunday. Take care and God bless.